And so you probably have to keep the light yeah. on for it. All right, so this is kind of impromptu one. I was uh, surfing around YouTube this morning, catching up with some of the other tarantula videos. Uh, one thing I don't say, I think, enough is that although I obviously put a lot of information, share a lot of information on Tom's Big Spiders and on my YouTube channel, I'm constantly reading up and uh, reading up on new ways to keep them, what other keepers are doing. Uh, even if I have a species I've kept well for several years, I do enjoy reading about or watching videos on how other people keep them. And that's how I kind of glean a lot of knowledge and a lot of tricks and things that I use for these guys. Now, one species that's kind of confounded me for a little while is a P. muticus. And just a little story, I ended up buying P. muticus slings a couple years back, um, read all about them, did all my research. I house them in 32 ounce deli cups, like uh, with a lot of substrate because they like to burrow. Both of my guys burrowed right off the bat, all the way down to the bottom, and then proceeded to seal off the burrows. And I was having a real difficult time with them not eating. And I've read a lot that a lot of times that the P. muticus are not only very slow growers, but people have a hard time getting them to eat. They don't eat, they take time off, and that's part of the reason they grow so slowly. So I thought nothing of it. And as time went by, one of the slings ended up basically sealing itself in its enclosure. I watch it as it molted. So I'm like, okay, good. It's in primo. It, it molted. It was in primo. That's why I wasn't eating. And waited for it to start eating again. It never did. It never came to the surface. And I found it one day dead at the end of its, uh, the bottom of its enclosure. And it confounded me because I don't like losing slings. I pride myself on not losing a lot of spiders. And I thought I had everything right with this. A couple months later, the other one did the exact same thing. So I know I share a lot of my success stories. This was one of, I considered one of my biggest failures. I was really upset with it because I thought I had screwed up and done something wrong. But they were set up what I thought was correctly. I got these two in and did a video on it. They're juveniles and I gave them a lot of depth of substrate to dig in because I wanted to give them some room to grow. One of them ate right off the bat, dug down to the bottom, filled up its, um, its entrance. And that's the last I'd seen of it since February. Other one never ate, dug right down to the bottom, filled up its, uh, the entrance to its burrow, and hasn't eaten anything since. So I've waited, and I've waited, and I figured over the winter that they would probably hibernate because it's a little cooler and drier. However, summer came, everything, all my burrowing species have come up and started eating again and molted. I watched as these two molted a couple months ago and still didn't eat. So to my story, I was watching a video by Deadly Tarantula Girl that she was talking about basic queen baboon care. Uh, for those of you who haven't been following, she keeps her baboons in shallow substrate. And this caused a big ruckus, a lot of people jumping to complain that that's not how you keep a fossorial species. It blew up and she did a follow-up video where she explained again, this is how she's kept them for many, many years. Now, I'm not telling everybody out there that they should not give their fossorial species room to dig, but I will tell you when you see somebody keeping something differently than the way you do, Take in mind how much experience they have, take in what they say, see how the spiders are doing, and you know, give it some thoughts. See if it's something that you were interested in looking into or something that might benefit from looking into. Um, my initial reaction was like, oh dear, this is gonna absolutely explode, but gave her credit for honestly sticking to her guns and saying, hey, I've kept these for 20 years and they're doing fine. So I started reading the comments, and one of the comments was, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right, Jerome Distura, Jerome, Jerome, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right, if not, I apologize. But in his comment, he commented on how they often seem to bury themselves. He has kept several of them and almost starved themselves by not coming up to the surface and opening up their burrows. And I found this very intriguing because this is what I saw with my slings and what I was seeing with my juveniles. And he said he did an experiment, and this is something I have never done. It goes against everything I believe about uh, tarantulas burrowing. If anybody ever asked me if they should do this, I always tell them no, but it seemed intriguing in this situation. He actually carefully dug up the entrance to the burrow and dropped a roach in to see what would happen. Both of them eat immediately. And again, you're never supposed to do that as rule of thumb. I would say it's a good rule of thumb. If your tarantula has covered over its burrow, it's usually in pre molt it's a do not disturb sign. Don't disturb it. I've never done this. I tell people all the time, don't throw roaches in their webs or in their burrows or open up the webs. However, it really got me thinking. And I got my two guys out here and I had the one that hadn't eaten before. So as you can see, I carefully went down dug open the burrow very very carefully to make sure not to collapse it on it the tea was actually over here at the time and then took a male um what was it a black belat and dropped it in the side before i even had a chance to pull back the thing had grabbed uh, the runner red runner and was eating it now this is a tarantula who had molted several months ago its abdomen is absolutely tiny it hadn't been up for a drink it hadn't eaten anything yet grab this thing immediately. Now, if you've seen tarantulas, how they act when something enters their burrow and they don't want it there, they swat away at it, they kill it. This thing was obviously hungry. So I dropped the second one in. It immediately grabbed the second one. 
So it got me thinking. This is something I was going to leave completely alone. I never would have done this in the past, but luckily because of Deadly Tarantula Girl's video and because of Jerem's comment, it got me doing something that I normally wouldn't do. So with that done, I ended up going, what the heck, I was telling Billy about it. Like, I can't believe this actually worked, so I'm going to try it with the other one. So I very carefully opened the other one's den. You can see where the hole is in there. This one was a little easier because he had just plugged up the top of it. This one it was completely filled in. There wasn't even a tunnel going up. And you probably can't see it, but he is in there. He's got a burrow in there. I dropped the roach in again, grabbed it immediately. Dropped the second adult roach in, grabbed it immediately. It's been eaten the whole time. This one, again, had the old tiny hiney after the pre-molt. I can't help but think these guys weren't coming up to eat. So, again, I don't want this to turn into one of these spots where it gets very, very controversial because we're taught to keep fossorial species in a lot of dirt. I do it with all my fossorial species, whether it be Chilobrachis, whether it be my cobalt blues, they're all, my lividums, they're all kept in deep substrate. But I've never had an issue with any of them coming up and grabbing food. So I wouldn't change anything with them. However, <clears throat> I will say that experience is starting to teach me now and reading other keepers' experiences it's starting to teach me that sometimes there's an issue with these guys accessing food after they bury themselves, which kind of goes counter, uh, contradicts everything that we've learned about them. So I'm not sure if this is a rare situation in which their natural proclivities don't translate well to being kept in the home environment, whether they will dig and aren't, don't have the instincts to open up their enclosures. Again, I don't suggest anybody go and start tearing open their tarantula dens and tossing roaches inside. That's not what this is about. But it is about recognizing that when somebody says something that's out, that seems outlandish and goes against what you've been taught, to, to consider it intelligently and to look at your experience and to do a little research like I did. I went on the comments to see what other people are saying, what other people keeping them like this. Now, I will tell you, I've got a decision to make with these guys. I thought these enclosures were great. I thought this would give them room to grow. Now I'm thinking these might not be appropriate. That maybe something, would I would I put them on just two inches of substrate? Absolutely not. But would I probably put them on maybe three or four so there isn't as much room for them to bury down? That might be where we're going with this. So I might have rehousings in the future. So again, I know I put this stuff up there and I people contact me like I'm an expert. No, I'm only reporting my own experiences. And there's been many times where I've done stuff, I don't think it's going well. And I go out and look up to see what other people are doing and change things. I do think there are some things that are kind of stand in the hobby and it shouldn't be messed with. But I also think there's obviously room for interpretation of how to correctly keep these guys. So for Deadly Tarantula Girl, thank you so much for bringing up such a provocative topic. I'm glad she revisited it because I kind of forgot about the previous one. And it might have just saved these two spiders. This could have been a case where I found both these guys dead like I did my slings and then kicked myself in the butt over it and wondered what the hell I did wrong in the first place to end up with them dying. Instead, I've got two guys that are eating. I'm probably going to drop down a couple roaches later on, fatten them up, and we'll see how it goes from there. And there might be a rehousing in the future. So again, always if you're in the hobby, I don't say, if somebody says something that sounds wrong, don't just immediately jump on it and jump to conclusions. Do some research, find out what other people are doing, consider how long they've been keeping them for, and see if it's something that might, if, even if you don't do exactly what they're talking about, if it might be something that you might borrow aspects from for your own husbandry. So again, I will update afterwards because I do think this is very, very interesting. Again, I just want to make very, very clear. I don't want people going out and digging up all of their teas. This is the only species I've ever had to do this with. I've never had to dig up another fossorial species. They always close their dens when they're molting, open it back up when they're ready to go. This is, this is four of these guys I've had now that have done the exact same thing for me, covered up their burrows completely, not shown up for food, and then in this case, obviously shown that they were quite hungry and ate immediately. So again, just food for thought. I'm changing the way I'm keeping this. These guys are probably in something different later on. And if you find something like this again online that it doesn't really sound like what you've heard before, it doesn't hurt to do a little research, ask some people, see what people are doing.